oftentimes an employer will call us looking for a potential candidate to help them fill their position. And they come to us because they know that we really do kind of evaluate the person's strengths and we're not going to suggest somebody that we know can't do the job. We're going to make sure that the person that we're recommending has the necessary skill to do the job with a little bit of support from us, some job coaching and support on the job, but in the long run that they're going to be successful. Their diagnosis is also a very wide range from head injury, schizophrenic, depression, drug and alcohol, anxiety, such a wide range of variety. There's many different ways to get connected with Living Unlimited. One way is through OVR, Office of Vocational Rehabilitation. Another way may be through our website, and another way could be through our Facebook page or even by word of mouth. So my son Simon started working with Living Unlimited because he was looking for a job and he had interviewed a few different places and didn't have very successful interviews. <laughs> he is on the autism spectrum and his social skills were not really contributing to that success. <laughs> Well, the first thing that they did to help support Simon was to do a really good assessment on him. So they, they met both he and I here at the office and did some um, questionnaire type assessments. And then they took him out into the field and did some assessments at a couple of different places. If we're doing a CBWA, a community-based work assessment, I would ask you what your interests are, where you might like to work, for instance, if you think you might like to do a stocking job, I would take you to Wise's or Target and we would perform a stocking job. Um, we volunteer our time to do it and it's to see if you like the job, if the environment's right, and if you're able to do the job. I think they really got a good handle on what his strengths would be and what his likes would be so that they made a good match for him because he's been working at this job for a year and a half at least, and he's been very successful. We don't put people in jobs just to get them jobs. We want them to get a job they like so that they're gonna stay long term. And that's because they did a good job, not because I did the job for them. So they have to realize they got the job because of what they did, not because of what I did. Sabri performs two different jobs at Target. The first one is called Flow. What he does is he gets the merchandise that comes in from the trucks very early in the morning and he stocks all the shelves. Another part of Flow is recovering the floors before the store becomes really busy. So he makes everything look neat and organized. His second job at Target is carts. He is the cart attendant and he collects the carts and he files them in as people come. I gotta make sure I'm doing the carts right. I gotta make sure I'm doing the trash right. I gotta get reached. I gotta make sure I'm doing the bathrooms right. Clean them and yeah. And uh, walk around the store, there's like spill stations. I gotta make sure everyone has the exact stuff on the list that it got on, like in them, so yeah. He came on kind of like a little trial period to see how he was doing. Um, we've had several people from Living Unlimited to come in and you know try and find the right person for the right job. Um, so what we were able to do is he came in, uh, we hired him as a cart attendant. Um, like we did his interviews, he, uh, with some support, he was able to get through them. Sabri and I worked on daily hygiene checklist and also we created a time, a time sheet in what she had to get up, what she had to shower by, eat breakfast by, be on the bus by, and each time he completed a task, he got to check it off. She helped me come up with a lot of strategies. It's like, um, like here, she would say, like she would remind me and keep reminding me and it would like get stuck in there and she just helps me with a lot of things. Well yeah, she, she reminded me to go over there check and cause we got a checklist of how to do carts and what we gotta do after we do carts, get all the carts in, like trash, bathroom, 
and stuff like that. It's really opened us up to maybe bringing on team members who we wouldn't have brought on in the first place. It really kind of helps um, open up uh, new and diverse uh, team members that we wouldn't normally have exposure to, and it really helps not only help them get in the door, but succeed once they get here. We're going to focus on your strengths first. So we're going to look at, you know, what are you doing really well? What, you know, do you have great communication? Do you make great eye contact? We're going to start with those, you know, strengths, and we're going to build on those strengths. When we're building on those skills, it's really going to, you know, improve a lot of other things. If you're struggling with confidence or self-esteem, once you see all the things that you can do really well, then that self-esteem and that confidence is just, you know, going to start going up. Erica's main thing was her communication and interacting with others. She's very shy, but once you get to know her, she's the most bubbly and friendly person that you'll ever meet. Um, so it's kind of just opening her up and getting her out into the community and you know, giving her the hands-on experience to work and be out in the public. We went over questions and like, um, like when we went over them, it was like easier to answer the questions and it's not as hard to like sit there and think about what I'm going to say. She did an awesome job and she got the job on the spot. I um, cleaned the exam rooms, um, stock like the paper towels and stuff like that, the soap and um, I cleaned the grout. We might balance checkbooks together, go to the bank, go to the grocery store, even put, making a grocery list to know what's most important to least important so then you can manage your money and know what you need to spend. Uh, we went into the laundry, did laundry. And, Do you remember where? Um, holiday. Is it Holiday Inn? Uh-huh. And then we went to... Um, an airport, I don't know what the name is, yep. and did dishes. We don't want to be, you know, strangers that come into your job and say you're doing this wrong, you're doing that wrong. We want to be people who come in and we're there to help you and you're like, oh hey, it's, it's Emily, you know, nice, nice to see you, you know, this is what I'm working on today. So we're really about, you know, developing that relationship to help make that person as successful as they can be. Yeah, seeing her grow is awesome. Um, I mean, in the beginning, um, she, you know, there was a few struggles and helping her overcome them and watching her, you know, get better and better at that each day. And now she's doing it on her own fully, you know, finding her own way of communication, her own transportation, writing her schedule down, doing all of it by herself. Um, I'm a, I take my dogs to that vet, so, you know, I run into her every now and then. and. My dogs are bad, so sometimes they stay overnight, and I'll always say, check on my dogs for me. So I think we have communication outside of, you know, me being our job coach a little bit as well, and she feels comfortable with that. When I see my client make progressions, it's very rewarding to not only me, but to them. I like to watch them continue to learn and to grow, and also to see all the hard work that we've worked on pay off. A lot of people are willing to, you know, work with us and let us come in for assessments, um, or they'll, you know, see us in the store a couple times and they'll kind of pick up on while we're there and they'll start asking clients questions. Just kind of going out there and just embracing it is, you know, one way that we really try and get involved in the community. Any parent of a child that has some disabilities will tell you you just constantly working towards making sure that they're okay if God forbid something happened to you. So it just makes you feel like there's possibilities. It's so nice when you can see where they started out and how they have evolved. It's almost like a moth turning into a butterfly. If I had a magic wand, I would make programming, human service programming, like what we do, top priority because it's giving back to society.